everyone. This is going to be a completely different share. I'm going to share my journal with you. A teensy bit of it because um, yeah, it's very deep and very profound, the work that I'm working on right now. But I know that we're all working on this. And so this is my, this is a part of a letter that I wrote to death or kind of my death letter as if um, I know that I'm passing away. Um, I've done this while I was actually doing this deep work. I got a message that a very dear colleague of mine had passed away. And just because of 2020 and 21, I know that we're absolutely all confronted with these deep questions about life and death. And so I wanted to share with you because that's what I've been doing and that is where I'm at right now. So to share with you about anything else, because I think this is too deep and this is too dark, um, is being inauthentic. And, you know, I'm very authentic. So here it goes. Death is not personal. It is not my death or your death. We are all busy dying. The more personal or personalized we make things, the less profound they become. We need a devotional approach to death instead of seeing it as an interruption of our life. I understand this when I see my need for control to feel safe. It feels good to be more incomplete with this one, even if this lesson continues to play out in space and time in the physical realm. We want to have safety, security, stability through predictability, but the only thing that is a sure thing is there will be change and we will die. What matters to me in my life the most is to be a disciple of life and death, to become fearless in my presence in every moment, to fully live while I am dying. On my dying bed, which I hope will not be in bed, but in water, on grass or in soil, what would I have changed? Absolutely nothing. There is no need to change anything while I remain focused on what matters the most to me. It means what matters the most is life and love through understanding, death and the dark. There's a life and death worth living and dying for. My advice from the death portal is this. Let go, love, live. Lean into lessons, learn, and then leave. Goodbye to this life forever. What a wild ride. I pretty much know I connected, I contracted and expanded. I remained in the flow and I navigated blockages. My will. What an interesting name for the document that describes where your possessions will go. Everything already belongs to my children. Whatever they need, my land, my heart, my money, my home, my diamonds or crystals or stones or silver, platinum and gold, my homeopathic pharmacy, my essential oils. These are my prized possessions. In my final act, I give it to them as and when they need it now. What a ridiculous notion that they have to wait when I am dead. It makes no sense that people hold on to it and leave it in a will. I leave it to them now. It's theirs. It was never mine. Until we can let go of everything, we are not truly free. As we face a possible six mass extinction, as we have destroyed our soil and our gut, we will get to face death correction, are facing death. Even COVID is another warning from the virus and bacteria kingdom that they are ready for their collective takeover of this planet. I get the split, the duality we see between fear and love as the two choices we think we have when we act, but there is a false duality between death and life. We see death is bad and we fear it, and life is good and we love it. We have it all upside down and inside out. Some people never live. 
but we are all dying from the day that we are born. It is all I will be when my physical perfection prediction cease to be, become the nothing it already is. To be continued, because working with death, it has infinite depth, like the dark. It is far from over, yet it is the moment it begun. Love and light, Marie.